So we're moving into texturing, and in order to do that, we need our UV map. And you can see with this character, this is the 3D character on the left, and then this is our texture map on the right. And this is, this is done in probably some outside program. Uh, for a while, people used Photoshop, but it, is, uh, it has awful tools in comparison to something like Substance Painter to achieve what you see as the uh, final product right here. This, this looks very nice and clean. Um, and I, I'm sure you, a lot of you have seen something like this before, like this image on the right. Because uh, like a lot of us are just into you know art, animation, stuff like that. Uh, and this is a texture map. And the reason it is kind of splayed apart like this in different slots is because you, you go in to your 3D model and you sort of imagine you're taking a pair of scissors across different parts of the model and you just cut it across and unfold it and put it into this space called UV space. And that's just the letter U, the letter V um, to make a UV map. And then on that map is where you're drawing over your model. So basically, if I was to take a cube, boom, right there. And if I go into my modeling UV up here, look, they have an entire, entire section for it in your modeling uh, menu up here. If you go to UV editor, boom, you can see exactly where the UVs for that cube are. And it's basically unfolded. Let's find, if we, if we click on our, our faces, we can kind of see which ones correspond to what on the, uh, this UV cube in here. And you have this. Um, and you'll see that you have this thick white border around different edges on your model. That's where the program went through and made the cuts for each of those. Um, my model will probably have some weird arbitrary ones because we've been, yeah. So look at the UVs for my model here. Complete garbage, unusable. Like, and notice how there's a thick white line around pretty much every poly. That's because nothing is even like sewed together. It's like if you went through every single poly on my character and cut around it in UV space, separated it out. Uh, it'd be like on this, this tracer model, it, instead of having like, look, you can see like this is the, the thigh or like outer, outer thigh area of the pants, it's right here. Uh, they cut on the inside seam where that, where that natural seam of the pants would be. Um, and then folded it out, but like my model, it's like someone went over every single poly and just cut it out and then put it into that UV space. So pretty much unusable. Um, and to maybe better visualize what's going on with, with this UV stuff is if I do mesh, mesh extract, which can go into each face. And this won't work for uh, looking in Space. But our goal is to unfold every single poly that we have on our character into 2D space. So what our UVs are doing in that separate menu, this UV editor, what our UVs are doing is kind of just going into all of our polygon or polygonal planes and folding those down. So I just want you guys to know that conceptually that we're doing that in there. You can see So that's basic. That's basically the the concept behind UVing is that you you go through, 
you cut along different seams of your character and then fold it out on the ground like that in your UV space. So it would all sit within uh, zero to one. Notice how it goes from zero to infinity. Uh, it stops counting over here, but um, you basically pack everything into this zero to one UV space. I have a, a, a pretty thick uh, PDF on our, in our course content about that. Uh, so feel free to, to pop that open and give that a gander because it, it, it'll go over the concepts of this sort of stuff again for you. Uh, now, in order to apply that sort of knowledge to the character, uh, we need to start going in and start UV. Uh, notice how when I click on my object, my uh, straps are not highlighted and my eyes aren't highlighted and my, uh, my eyebrows aren't either. And that's because they're separate objects still, right? Uh, and now for my side of things, I'm going to do mesh combine. I have to combine pretty much everything because I'm going into a game engine at the end of my sort of pipeline. Uh, and that's different from film because uh, if, you put, if you put multiple objects, like these are all separate right now, one, two, three objects, four if you count the eyes. Uh, on, on like video game side of things, if you have four different objects like that, then you'd have four different materials uh, in, in the scene. And uh, we can't afford to do that. We want to have as few materials as, we, as possible, as few meshes as possible. Like we want to have, we want to have these be completely combined. So I'm just going to go ahead and mesh combine everything. Um, I'm going to make this one for last. Boom. So I have my my character completely done like this. Uh, on your guys' side, if you have them separate, you could do the UV map for only the, the body and then your clothes and then export those separately um, or as one to, uh, to uh, Substance Painter with different materials as we've done in the past. You guys, I remember when you guys like, applied the materials to uh, like your, your care, that, that small sculpt from ZBrush and then did a different material for like the eyebrow or something. Uh, so it'd be the same as that for sending stuff to Substance Painter. But I need to show you guys how to start actually unfolding your character and getting some usable UVs. So if I go into my UV editor right here, boom, I would go to, uh, at first you need to like, because this is garbage. This is just garbage unusable data. And the first step, you have to create fresh new UVs. And I'm going to use create. And I'm going to uh, use the planar setting. And I'm going to project from the Z axis. Because my character is facing forward on Z. If I, if I capture from Y axis, you can see what happens. If I click apply, look, it's like going from the top. It's like staring down and scanning your character. So I want to do that from Z. I'm going to apply. And I'm going to keep image width height ratio, and it's going to make sure that your your character is uniform. Like if I if I do that uh, Y projection again, and then turn off keep image width height ratio, see how it's like stretched out. But if I enable that, boom, it's like what he looks like in real space. So just so you know, I just do Z axis keep cam uh, keep image width, boom. So does anyone know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna propose this question to the class. Do you guys know where we would insert some cuts into this model to start folding out your character? Where do you think we would put those scenes on the character? I'm just checking out chat, nothing's happening there. Anyone have any ideas where the joints, Ricardo says? Interesting, interesting, okay. 
the inner arm, inner leg, probably back of the head. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so Ricardo fucking knows this shit already. Uh, <laughs> so what, what made you say that? I guess those are the places that we don't see the most on models. Exactly. Okay. Ricardo has some absolutely key information there. Uh, wherever you make one of those cuts, a lot of the times in the end result, you'll see some slight you'll see a little bit of that seam in there. And I'm sure you guys have played some video game before or something where you see, like, uh, you can, like, see, like, where you'd cut under the arm. You can see a little bit of mismatch in the texturing. Uh, that's a classic problem. Um, and it's, it's way easier to get rid of than Substance Painter, and it's, at this point, kind of a thing of the past. Uh, but, but still, the, you should keep your seams kind of on the inside of, of things. Uh, another thing to think about, because Ricardo says the joints, and in some situations he's right, in some situations that's not always correct. Um, because if I cut at this joint on the elbow, like if I, if I did a, a, a cut across these, then I would have a separate chunk for this upper arm on my UV map. And then also a separate chunk for like this lower arm bit here that meets up with the glove. And for the glove, since that's a different material, I would want that to be in its own chunk, you know? Like if we look at this tracer image again, like everything is broken up by sort of, by like what material it's made out of, you know? Like the, the this, there's a, a clearly a separate like the, this cuff of the sleeve is different from the actual sleeve jacket itself. Um, the little reactor thing is on a different uh, a, a different part of the UV map. The the so is like the bracer, all that stuff. So keep that in mind as well. That you want to break it up into different. Uh, like what your different materials are made out of, right? And if you, if you didn't, then you'd see a very thin pixelated uh, edge here. Like if you zoomed in really close, uh, or, or maybe not so close, depending on how uh, high res your textures are, uh, you would see some, like a gradient of pixels from your image, your texture map, if you, if you left that as one chunk. So always be sure to, to separate based on material, and keep in mind that sometimes you don't want to uh, cut off at the joints, like, like say this elbow, for instance. I would, even if I didn't have this glove, I would keep the arm as one solid shape. I might go in and cut at the shoulder, though, because think about where your, think about your clothes that you're wearing. Uh, like, I'm wearing this t-shirt, right? Now, this t-shirt started as 2D pieces of fabric, right? That were on like some assembly line and it got cut out and then reassembled. Now, they bas it's basically the opposite of what we're doing. Like, they took a 2D object and had to make it a 3D object. We have to take this 3D object, make it a 2D object. And the same sort of seams that are on the shirt is what we would see on our character as well. So if I, if I feel around on my shirt, I can I can feel the uh, the seam down the side. They have the seam down the side, and then a seam at the shoulder as well, right? Because there's no there's no easy way to take a two D piece of cloth and have it create a sleeve hole out of it. You need to unwrap that. Think of it as like almost a candy wrapper, like a C. Like you get what is that? It's not Snickers. It's like that garbage. I hate the, that candy. What is it? Let me find it. Um, it's like that. Oh, Tootsie Roll. That's what it is. Oh, I hate Tootsie Rolls. They're, they're awful. Uh, if you look at the, uh, let's, let's pop out. There we go. Perfect image. Oh my God. Why is this image so slow loading? All right. So like, 
the Tootsie Roll wrapper, they had the same issue. They had to wrap a 2D image of their, you know, of their Tootsie Roll logo around that chocolate, right? And that's a cylinder. So in order to do that, they had to have an opening at the end and they, they kind of cheated out and just twisted the ends. Uh, and then they also have a cut down the side of it, right? Because when you untwist the ends, you can unfold it around that cylinder. So that that's the sort of, I love Tootsie Rolls when I was little. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. I, uh, oh man, you guys are, you guys are Tootsie Roll fans? Damn. I've stumbled into enemy territory. Uh, so keep that in mind. Like for cylindrical shapes, you want to have a cut at the ends and down the length of them. Like if you, if you were to, to map up like a Pepsi can or a Coke can, you'd have to have that. You would cut along the top at the lip of that. And then you'd cut at the bottom as well. And you'd cut down the length of that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a character with that premise in mind. So I, I, my first step was to create UVs. I just want to create planar, Z-axis, and then apply. Jennifer, the fruit flavors are the ones I look forward to. Well, yeah, hell yeah. All right, Jennifer's speaking the truth. I'm glad we have one, uh, one, one's, oh, hell yeah. Okay, yeah, Ricardo's also not a fan of the Tootsie Rolls. All right, they're fighting the good fight. So first step, create planar UVs, boom, right there. And you can really see your character easily this way. And th this is why I really like working this way. Um, but of course, if you have separate objects, like if you keep your eyes separate, if you keep your like clothing separate, then you won't see that in here because it only does it on a per object basis. And uh, so I'm gonna just start cutting up where I, where I need this. So remember, I'm cutting based on material, right? So my pants are gonna have a different material than my torso. So I'm just gonna double click that edge loop for the pants and I'm going to go to cut and sew, cut, boom. And look at that new highlighted line right there, right? That means that tells us where our cuts are in 3D space and it's infinitely useful in this. Like please, if you don't have this, thickness enabled you can always go up to uh display polygons and where is it texture border edges texture border edges that's how you turn that on if, if you if that's still not working for you then go to i believe you can go to uh, display polygons custom polygon display because in in older versions of maya we've had some some issues with that and then uh, you can tell it again there to to highlight your texture border edges. It's going to make this process so much easier. If you don't do that, um, you're in for a very a very puzzling experience. So next step is I want to start thinking about where my seams go, right? And uh, I believe who's I think it was Ricardo said that. Um, said that you do under the arms and he's absolutely correct. Uh, I would extend that to go all the way over the arms as well. And I'm just separating out this shoulder area. Boom. So I'm going to make a cut there. Bang. Now it's highlighted. I know that there's a cut there and think about this as the, uh, Pepsi can scenario. Oh, oops. I don't have symmetry on. It's always nice to, to cut with symmetry on. Um, in this situation, I'm just re-highlighting this because with symmetry on them, I should be selecting the other side as well. And that's looking good. All right. I'm going to cut. Boom. Right there. Make sure it's cut. Hell yeah. So I, I want you to think of like the, the, the Coke can or the Tootsie Roll basically any cylinder, like this body is very cylindrical, right? So if I cut down on top and cut down, uh, or, or I cut across the waist as well, then I need to cut 
up the side of it, right? So if I just go in and cut this, go to UV, cut and sew, boom. Uh, there's also a sub menu in here. I should see a hide UV toolkit. Oh, wait, oops. Show UV toolkit. This usually docks in here somewhere. Nice. And the, you can just, it, it's pretty nice to have uh, cut and sew in here. Uh, just because it's like a nice clickable button, you don't have to dig through any menus. Uh, most of the functions that you see in here, you can definitely see down here as well. Uh, so I'm cutting across there and I cut on the other side as well. Uh, I'm also going to do a cut sort of, hmm, it can be tragic, but I'm gonna cut the, the sort of like the, the, the neck of him. I'm gonna cut his neck off here, right there. And I'm gonna try to hide that seam under under the strap because remember we're, we're trying to cut in places where we don't really see much right and that continues across there awesome then I just go to cut boom right there perfect now in order to unfold that face I'm going to look at that tracer right look at how they did their face right because like people care a lot about the face. That's how you identify with a character. You have to have a solid, like good looking face. Um, and we don't care about the back as much, right? We don't care at the, about the back of the head. Like we're not staring at that very much. Um, so I, it, it's all, it's pretty standard to keep that seam down the back of it. So I'm gonna cut from that first, uh, that, that next seam up there. I'm going to cut into the hair. And I'm going to select that one too. Make sure you're, you're selecting all the way up to that loop up there. I don't have like a skull underneath my hair in this model. Uh, simply because I want to save on polygons because I'm going into a game engine. Um, but if you have a skull under there, make sure you go pretty high up across that and probably cut off like where where my hairline used to be um that's where you would probably terminate that that like you would cut up to that that way it would unfold that skin naturally man come to think of this this, this whole cutting skin unfolding it's very <laughs> very uh, dark <laughs> it's, it's very fitting for halloween and uh october um so where else are we going to, so if, I, if I'm going to do the rest of this arm and hand, where are my seams going to go, guys? Where am I going to put those seams? I have no seams on any of this stuff yet. I have the torso handled, but I have nothing else with seams on it. Uh, on the side of the arm, like starting from like the pinky all the way up to the arm, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's you're you're very close to something. Uh, so you're saying from the pinky, like like here, to where? To like the base of the arm, maybe. Or are we doing the whole arm, or just like the like the gloves? We're doing the arm and the gloves at this point. Okay. So, so you, this is what you're saying? Yeah, just like all the way up like that. Yeah, all right. So that, that is, that's pretty, um, that's, that's pretty spot on. Uh, however, you, you've kind of stumbled onto how we're going to unwrap the hand, right? Because if we were to do the, the Tootsie Roll method, where like if you picture all of these fingers as a Tootsie Roll, you would go in and you would cut this and then you would cut the, the down the length of it as well however for um for the hand i've seen a lot of 3d professionals instead do um 
do a, basically all the way across this edge loop here. So it's, it's going through half the fingers. And then it's not going up the wrist like this. So it, it's basically what you said, but on the other side. Let me select. Let me select the, the proper edge loops. Oh, part of my mesh is fucked up here. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. One second. Let me fix this. Um, when you're when you're UV mapping, it's kind of a one ray street. Um, target weld sometimes can fuck up your model's UVs because I need to target weld this back in right there. Um, but we haven't even really done the UVs for that section yet. So let me just double check. Yeah, it looks, looks all good. Um, you can multi-cut and usually be good. You cannot extrude. If you're, if you're, if you're like trying to do some like last minute changes to this, you cannot extrude. Uh, multi-cut works uh, like pretty much all the time. Target weld works sometimes. But uh, yeah, extrude and quad draw definitely don't work. So keep in mind that this is like your mesh has to be done and ready for this for this step. Uh, so let me go back and do that cut that Ricardo was talking about. Um, right there. And we're basically gonna cut the hand in half. And then, uh, oops. it's gonna get a little bit messy over here. Actually, we now I'll keep that on the lower side because I want to have the the cut lead on the lower side of this over here. Hide this seam on like the lower side of that thumb. Oh yeah, and that goes across the hand. Perfect. And it's not super ideal to have a seam kind of right here, but it is still on like the lower side of that of that glove. Uh, and then I, I lead that into the glove, obviously. Um, so let's see. Hopefully, you'll be able to see this better. Um, the cut goes all the way across the hand. And there is not a seam on this side. So what we're basically gonna do is when we unfold it, we're taking both sides of that hand and kind of just folding it open like a book around this, like if this was the, uh, the spine of the book, we're gonna unfold it over like that. Uh, I'm gonna go to cut, boom. And I'm gonna do the same for this inside stuff, because remember, we separate by material. So cut, boom. So that's pretty much ready to go. Um, this sort of bracer is also a metal material versus the glove sort of um, uh, leather material. So I'm going to go in and cut across that as well. So looking at our seams, we have pretty much everything ready for the glove. But then we get to the arm and Ricardo's first suggestion, I think it was Ricardo back at the start of this, uh, was to cut on the underside of the arm. And that is also true. Because if you think about this arm as the cylinder, you need, we have the cut at one end of it and at the other end. And then you need that one down the length of it in order to actually unfold it and unwrap it. So I'm going to go in, cut right there. And then the, uh, we've got to do it for the rest of everything on this, on this model.
if I go into my rings, because he has these sort of like ring bracer, uh, bracer type things, I'm going to hide the seam on those underneath the rings. So if I go into if I go into four mode, you can see that's just like a interior sort of edge. And I'm going to cut All right there, and then now we have to do the pants. So for the pants, let's see. We're going to need uh, if we just look at our own pants. It's pretty helpful. We have a seam just down the the middle, like the, the, the inseam, I believe it's called, of the pants. Right there, I think that's what it's called, might not be. Cut, right there. And we could also just do one on the outside of the pants. Right there, I'm gonna not have that go up into the torso. I can cut right there. And uh, we might get a little bit of stretching towards this interior part because like notice how it curves around the crotch area and goes deep into like this crevice. But uh, if we just cut it like this, we might get a little bit of stretching there. Um, I'm, I'm willing to, to do that. Uh, an alternative would be to uh, cut the legs off like around that loop and then do do each leg the same way that we did the, the arm um, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this way this method uh, you could even go as far as to sew up one of these one of these lengths um, sewing in case you mess something up on your UV map say I go in and I cut some stuff that I don't want to uh, to have separate, I can instead go back in and select those and sew, right? So it's always undoable. Like if you, if you cut too far into here, you can always just go back in, select them, sew them together. Uh, stitch together is if you uh, have started unfolding everything and then you encounter problems where you wanna sew things together. Stitch together will move like, like if you did stitch together on this, on this tracer, uh, if you did stitch together on this, it would move this to, to match up with like the inside uh, seam right there. It would move those chunks in. Um, however, if you do that after you've made your texture, nothing's gonna work because your texture map is just one, an image, right? It's just, a, it's just a PNG. So if you move stuff around and then try to use the same texture, like that's not gonna work. Uh, continuing on. We have the boots. The boots are pretty low res on this guy because I didn't care about, um, like he has a, he's gonna be like a shopkeep, so you're not gonna really see his boots. So I purposefully made them pretty low res. Uh, hopefully we don't see it in game very much. I don't think we will. Right there. I'm just cutting out. This is, once again, another metal bracket sort of pad. So I need to have that be on a separate hunk right there. Awesome. And here we go. Cut. Uh, I might have a different material for like the um, platforms for the shoes. So I'm going to cut that off as well. And these might be separate as well. Mm, nah, I think they'll be fine actually. I'll leave it like that. So I just have that down the length and then at the bottom. Uh, we'll have to see how this unfolds because we might need to have this uh, shoe part on a separate, we might need to separate this out as well to get nicer unfolds. Uh, I think we will eventually, but I want to want to see that happen before our very eyes. So that's pretty much it. Uh, my guy has like an inside of the mouth, so I'm going to cut that off as well. 
right there. I'm going to do a cut. Boom. Everything else, though, seems pretty in line. Uh, the ears kind of stick out pretty far, so if I flatten out everything, they might compress a little bit. So I would uh, wager that it would be a good idea to go in and cut this stuff as well. Right there. Cut. Boom. So always think about that, because if, if you unfold if you unfold everything and then you have like something protruding out as it tries to stretch out the back of the, cause it, we have that seam in the back of the skull, right? So as it tries to unfold that out, those, those ears would kind of get, start to get compressed in. Um, the same is true for the nose as well. Um, but I don't, I, I don't want to have a seam directly on the front of the face there. So I'm just going to, uh, deal with having maybe a little bit of smushing on that nose in the UV map. Uh, everything is looking pretty nice though. The, this, the, this is the same premise as the ears. This flange of the sort of metal bracer might come out too far. So I would go in and uh, maybe cut this off. Maybe have these be in two separate chunks. Cut, and I think those will, will open up a lot more nicely. Uh, but think about it right now, like we are only perimeter edge for that. Um, let me just go into the, the shell so you can see it yourself. I got a UV shell in here, I'm just holding right click, same as how we hold right click in here. If you hold right click in here, you get op, uh, access to edge, vertex, face, UV and UV shell. So if we go into the UV shell, you can see how I've been separating this character now when I drag uh, my selection over everything. So if I move this up, you can see that the only cuts that I have on this, like around the outside, and then it, it, it's, it's basically an extrusion up, right? So if I fold this out, or if I unfold this, it's gonna get pretty compressed. And you'll, you'll see that in a bit, and I'll, I'll show you how to fix it. But now we go on to the step of unfolding. Wait, is this still doable when parts of our mesh got kind of wonky as there's parts where the flow of it gets disrupted? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, like if, I didn't have, if I didn't have the cleanest, uh, sorry, I don't know how long ago that question was asked. It probably was asked a while ago. Um, if it's like a little bit wonky here, like if it, like, like my, before my edge loops kind of went down and it wasn't as selectable, I would still go in and select the edge that is defining the, the like where the skin meets the pants. I would still select that and I, it, it would still work, I think. So um, you should be good to go. Uh, like like you, you saw when I was selecting the arm, it wasn't just one loop. Like if I double click this edge, it I had to you know, shift double click this stuff too. I had to do it in multiple parts simply because uh, the way my edges converge, all these like five pointed stars right there, that'll make it so you can't just double click the, the, the rim. I could have also just double clicked this one and had my, my cut be here rather than, uh, rather than on that interior part. Uh, but I wanted to keep it snug with the rest of the model. So I'm gonna undo that. Or I could have just sewed that back together. That would also work. Always remember your sew tool or stitch together, either one. Um, but yeah, so now we have our cuts set into the model and we're ready to start unfolding this bad boy. Um, so I'm gonna go into, this will be a sort of uh, truth, uh, like, or, or uh, not truth. Um, it'll sort of test the integrity of your model because because there are some that there's something called non manifold geometry, and I know someone is going to get into trouble with that. Um, non manifold geometry is situations where you have like a like th this sphere has the inside of it. 
right? Has an inside and an outside. And uh, non-manifold geometry happens when that outside surface gets confused for the inside surface. Um, for most of you, since we're doing quadral to make these characters, you won't run into this problem, but like there might be some scenarios where we like welded something together wrong. Um, so if, you, if it's, if, if when we're unfolding it, it'll, it says you cannot unfold, it has non-manifold geometry. Uh, it's probably because something like this happened where if I extrude out, look, now we have like this face is facing outward and it's connecting to this face that's like facing outward, which works, but this inward facing face or this inward facing geometry that like you can tell because it's like all black, it's not like lit up, is connecting directly to that outside facing geometry, like that doesn't work. So this is non-manifold. Um, stuff that, uh, other stuff that can create non-manifold geometry is like merge vertices, if I merge to center, oh wait, whoops. Off and merge verts, merge to center. I have two outward facing verts merging, or I guess that's not the best example. So this is two outward facing verts, but then if you merge them into the center, they're, they're like connected in here, and this geometry is also non-manifold. So that, that shit can mess us up during this step, and we'll see if my character has non-manifold geometry right now. Um, when this tool goes off. So I'm going to go into UV shell mode and I'm going to start just moving this arm away from the rest of the stuff that I haven't unfolded yet. I've made my cuts and everything, but I haven't started unfolding it actually. Um, and I'll just do the other arm at the same time just because they're symmetrical. Uh, my computer's running a bit slow, so I'm going to save and I'm going to uh, edit, delete all by type history because quad draw creates a lot of history. Um, so let's give this unfold a go. Uh, you can find it in this unfold menu. You can also find it under tools, I believe. Yeah, unfold. And, oh wait, what? Oh wait, that's the brush, never mind. One second. Brush Oh, modify, sorry. Uh, you'd find it unfold. I'm gonna click the options. Make sure you have Unfold 3D activated. If you do not, uh, if you don't, if you don't have the option in here in your Unfold options, go to Windows Settings and Preferences. Uh, whoops, Windows Settings and Preferences Plugin Manager, and you're going to be looking for Unfold 3D.mml or MLL or Unfold 3D.bundle. Um, Let's find it in here. Yeah, I, I just typed in the search bar, unfold 3D. Make sure it's loaded and auto-loaded if you don't have that option, because unfold 3D is way better than legacy. Oh, it looks like they added a fixed non-manifold geometry. Hell yeah, okay. So if, you're, if you try to run this tool and it says non-manifold geometry detected, uh, then you can try to do fixed non-manifold geometry. That might be sick. Uh, I'm going to apply, and notice what happened to my my arms right here. So you can see like the actual 3D shape of them right now, right? But if I click apply, boom, instantly just spread them out, and uh, they look a lot more akin to the tracer sort of map right here. And I'm going to do that with everything. So I'm going to click. Uh, I'm going to click the gloves. I'm going to do apply. Boom. And it unfolded these. Uh, the, the hands get a little bit compressed. So I might go in and cut off those fingers and align them a little bit better. But like, you guys don't have to worry about that for the intro class. Pants, I'm going to do the front. I'm going to unfold. I'm going to do the same to the back. I'm just going to press G to unfold. 
simple, simple. I'm going to do the bracers, G. Oh, it didn't seem to work. I'm just going to click apply. There we go. Torso. Uh, I might actually I'm going to sew this one up because I want the torso to be in one chunk right there. Uh, actually, I'm going to do the his left side. I'm going to sew these together. Actually, I'll, I'll show you how to, to move in, sew, stitch together. So I'm gonna unfold these first. Sorry about the confusion. I'm gonna unfold right there. Oh, see how it, so it, it unfolded kind of vertically. So I had his torso as one chunk the whole time. I just didn't know. Uh, they were connecting under the, underneath the strap, which is very sneaky of them. I'm going to instead go into edge mode. And I'm just selecting the edges in the UV map now. And I'm cutting that. So now if I go into UV shell, those are two separate shells, the front and the back. Uh, and then I, wanna, I want to sew together this sort of side right here. I don't want to see a seam in engine or in, in game. Um, so if I have these two different islands, I can go into stitch together and then it moves the, the those island, those two UV shells together and sews them together. So this is a super useful tool. Super nice. Um, let's keep moving on here. Uh, we have this boot. Remember, it, if it gets really super skewed out, we might have to cut at the ankle and then do some more unfolds. So I'm going to unfold it here. Might not be, might not be too bad. We'll see though. Um, now you might be wondering, like, how are you testing if something is unfolding nicely? Uh, now the way that you can test that is by using this little checkerboard icon right here. This checkerboard. It's right next to this little landscape. It's gonna, uh, if you have a texture applied to the object, and do this, uh, it'll show you the, your texture in the background. Uh, however, if you do checkerboard, well, it just basically overwrites your character's display with a nice checkerboard. And you can tell if there's stretching, if these squares get a little bit too askew, like if they get too stretched out in one place, you can, you can uh, know, you, you, you'll be able to know that you need to fix some stuff there. Uh, now, places where it's stretching, right here along the strap, because I haven't unfolded that yet. It's also stretching right here on that edge, because I haven't unfolded that yet either. And same with the head. So I haven't done a lot of these, I haven't unfolded a lot of these parts yet. Um, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's, let's look at the, our, our boots. See, it's a little bit stretched out right there. Like, see how they're kind of warping around there and these squares don't really look like squares anymore. Uh, let's see if cutting the edges of this helps with that. I'm gonna go to Object X Symmetry. I'm just shift double clicking around on that. Always make sure to use double click. If you're, if you're trying to go fast, it'll select an edge loop for you that you can cut real quick. I'm going to turn off this checkerboard because it looks awful to look at in that scene. So that's cut now. And let's go into our shoes, UV shell. Uh, I'm just going to unfold both. Boom. Right there. And let's see. So if I, oh, I need to size these up. I'm going to turn off symmetry. kind of make sure that these are the same size. You don't want to scale things too out of proportion to each other. Let's make sure that these aren't too out of scale either. Now it's looking pretty good actually. Let's re-enable that checkerboard. Ah yeah. So look that I got a seam. I got an extra seam on my shoes. But the, the, the squares of the object are a lot less stretched. So there's a lot less stretching 
I'm definitely going to go for that instead. Um, because I don't know, usually there's like a, a seam here even on like a lot of boots that you see. Uh, just makes sense to have it there. And so let's move to UV shell. Boom. I'm just going to unfold these. And they're pretty tiny, but they're also the most under part of the shoe. You're not going to see that much. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in to kind of stretch those out. I'm going to unfold these. Bang. And there's a little bit of like crookedness there. You can solve that usually because if you have like a 90 degree turn like this, let me turn off. Like I have like a 90 degree turn on here. So to really gradually fix that, you can do it or uh, to, to help relieve that, I, I can just cut on the very edges of those. Boom. Let me go back into checkerboard mode. UV shell, I'm just going to unfold those. Boom. And it's not nearly as crooked now. Like it, it was kind of bending like probably twice as much before. You're always gonna get a little bit of bent because you can't you can't go in and flatten out these shapes a lot of the time, you know. Um, so we, we're just doing the best that we can. I'm just gonna go ahead and unfold these straps. Boom. I'm gonna unfold these rings. Um, I'm gonna unfold the face. Bang. Right there. I'm gonna unfold the ear as well. Make sure you, you've actually unfolded all of your object. Turn off checkerboard so it's not as awful to stare at. I'm gonna unfold, bang, right there. And that's, that's the basics of unfolding an object. Now, we need all this to be packed into, um, into this zero to one space. Uh, it's usually in a range and layout. Uh, let's do, oh man, they changed everything in here. Oh shit. Hmm. Well, usually if they add a bunch of stuff, then that means that they've kind of overhauled the tools for this section, which is pretty cool because uh, it was always kind of lame to unfold them. Um, for mapping these eyes, though, I might I might go into uh, be, before I uh, lay out everything. I'm going to cut along uh, the middle of those eyes. Just think about trying to like, like unwrapping an orb, like a perfectly orb shape is it's kind of strange. I think the best that you can do is kind of cut it in half and then splay those out. Um, the alternative is having like a, a a bunch of like cuts at the very pole, like where all of those verts meet in the middle. That's the only other option. Um, and I don't think that one's very good, especially when you have a pupil on the front of that. Like I want to, I want to maintain this pupil shape to be nice. So I'm gonna cut. And then we go into UV shell. Just like both of those. Yeah, unfold right there. Nice. Now, if you have like, because now we have to lay out everything out. I, I know I didn't do some things, but I want to keep you guys here. Um, forever. Um, like I, I didn't do the mouth, I didn't do the bracer bit, I didn't do all that. So uh, what you need to do now is pack all of this into zero to one space. And you can manually do that by just moving stuff around. Um, you just have to be very careful to avoid stacking UVs. Because if I stack this I, this pupil, it's like right on top of the shoulder right now. So if I make my texture for a shoulder, you'd see the texture on of the shoulder wrapped around the eye and it'll look like some sort of freakish Halloween horror, which is perfect for the season, but not perfect for, uh, you know, the class. Uh, so let's, you can, you can one by one move this stuff in here. Uh, I, I kind of like doing that because it gives me a handle of like, where my objects are like I might want to keep all the strap bits together um 
and move those in as like kind of one. Like if I have all these pieces of the strap together, I can be like, oh, okay, I know this is the strap. I'll just make sure to color it one uniform thing. Uh, since we're doing Substance Painter, it's probably not gonna matter that much because in Substance Painter, a lot of what you do is like uh, paint bucket fill these different UV shells and work with them that way. Um, damn, I'm gonna need to go over these tools though because they, they added a lot. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna do uh, layout. Let's try layout. Yeah. So layout goes in and it packs your mesh for you. It kind of leaves no room for breeding though. Like, and if you have your your mesh like this close, um, it's gonna it's you'll see some of like the the gold bracket of this leak into the pants material. Because if I'm looking at the, these two, they're like right next to each other in UV space. Uh, so you always want to have a little bit of a buffer zone in there. Um, man. Usually you're able to, can I like double click this? Huh. There, there's definitely some more ways, but you could also always just manually go in and kind of move these around. Um, huh. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool though. Like they have a bunch of different, oh wow. Wow. Damn. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just nerding out over new, new Maya tools. Um, it's always dope. Whoa, what the, dude, that's super. Dude. All right, cool. All right, so Maya definitely updates some stuff sometimes and makes it cool. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so you can either like explore the layout tools or just go in one by one and make your UVs uh, nice and separate from each other. Um, but yeah, so that's that's UVing in a nutshell, real quick. Um, I know real quick was like an hour and a half, but this is probably one of the most abstract subjects because like we've been thinking about 3d shapes this whole time and then trying to translate that into 2d space is pretty difficult you know um it's pretty pretty strange uh but yeah so eventually you'll get a nice handle over it but just just like everything else in the class like it just takes practice and time um but yeah so please finish up your quad drawing as fast as possible so you can get onto UV because we need to make these textured. Next time you guys render them out, they're gonna be nice and colored. It's gonna be sick. Um, I'm gonna stop recording. <laughs>